Good morning, folks. We are this morning joining you from our garden. And uh, as we share the message this morning, we hear the birds around us and the sun just rising. This morning I want to talk to you about love. And I'm sure that all of us fell in love sometime, or at least once or more, during our lives. And when you experience this, the most euphoric emotions emerges. It feels like you live on cloud nine and everything around revolves around that one person that you love. Emotions and joy are indescribable and you want to spend every day and one minute of the day with that person. There seems to be no flaws or faults in this person. When you hear that person's name, your heart in rate increases and you get all excited. Emotions and feelings become the main building blocks for the relationship that starts, but, and eventually, the building blocks for a relationship that is full-blown and grows into a wonderful, strong, lasting relationship that could last for a very long time. Unfortunately, falling in love does not always develop into love. Many folks fall out of love. When this happens, the euphoria is replaced by depression and melancholy. Once a real, true love is found, and it happens in many instances, one would witness a beautiful, blooming, and solid relationship developing between two people. This would lead to a strong companionship that stands the test in time and tide of time. And although the temptations of the life and storms of ice would come against it, this relationship would somehow withstand these onslaughts. Even when cracks fall are formed, the relationship mends and carries on stronger and for the better. This in love solidifies into love and solid bricks of mortar of in love is formed, forms the basis for love. When you first met Jesus, you most probably experienced some of these same euphoric kind of experiences. I know I did. It was just at a much deeper spiritual level <clears throat> than when I fell in love with my wife. I could not get enough of sharing with those who listened, or even those that weren't interested to listen to my in love state. And this continued for weeks. The country, I've witnessed many fired up and spiritual people whose love relationship with Jesus grew cold. Many people fall out of love with Jesus, and for various reasons. And today I want to ask you the question, and I pose it to myself again. Are you in love with God, or do you love God? This question adds complexity to the words that Jesus spoke. We read this in Mark 12, verse 30 to 31. You must love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with your mind and all your strength. And then he added, the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other command is greater than these. The answer to this question above could be along the following lines. I really do want to love God and not just be in love with him. And if I've fallen out of love with God, how do I get back into a meaningful relationship? Well, Jennifer here in at crosswalk.com offers some very useful reflections in this girl. Firstly, how to love God with all your heart. To love God with your heart means to love God with all your emotions, praising, with, praising Him with your happiness, a smile, and gratitude. It's easy when things are going well, like when you perceive an answer to a prayer or one of life's good gifts come your way. But how about when things aren't going so well? All your heart means at all times, even when God seems quiet, even when He says wait, and even when He says no, and yes, even when bad things happen. Continuing to love God, even when bad things happen, or when good things don't happen, is key to a life of contentment. You don't have to be happy for the bad things. You must see through that bad circumstance to the God who wants to comfort you and will never leave you nor forsake you. Loving God is a day-to-day -day learning process. Secondly, how to love God with all your soul. To love God with your soul means that an, that innate part of you that always knew that you were created by a Creator. When, let, when you let yourself be still and quiet, something inside of you just knows that there is a God. 
when you look at all the intricacies of the universe, the planet, and your own body, as we read in the Psalms, peace of you knows you have a God-shaped hole within you that can only be satisfied by Him. But then you must allow yourself to go even further, past that simple knowing, and let yourself believe that God <clears throat> not only exists, but that He loves you enough to have sent His Son into this world to die for your sin and to set you free. This takes you to a solid relationship with the living Lord. And as a bonus, you went into heaven. Thirdly, how to love God with all your mind. Now that you're trusting in Him with your heart, excuse me, you continue to the next area. Not depending on your own understanding. Proverbs 3 verse 5. It is possible to know and believe in the truth of the Bible and yet still fall for many of the lies of the world and Satan. When I depend on my own understanding, lies run rampant in my brain. They can pop up at any time to slow my walk with God. Loving God with my mind means renewing my mind daily so that I think more of His thoughts instead of my own. I know His thoughts by reading the Bible daily. Then, with study and repetition, some of His thoughts go into my brain and dissipate those old lies. Then, how to love God with all your strength? When I study my actions, do they show a love for God? If I read God's word and don't obey it, it doesn't, does me no good. If I merely put the words into my brain without putting them into practice, it's just an encyclopedia entry. Only information, no transformation. Stepping out on faith and acting enables me to remember what I learned. And it may even help other people. God loves it when I'm led by faith. Worship isn't just singing, it's living by faith, so that other people see my example. It is presenting my body and my actions as a living and holy sacrifice to the God I love. That's Romans 12.1. It is doing things that are right, even when people around me don't understand. It's speaking up when I see injustices. It's caring for the physical and spiritually wounded. It's doing hard things. That take a lot of effort in order to possibly reap a harvest somewhere down the road. It's even doing things that are right and good, even when you don't seem to have any kind of reward. So in close, the Spurgeon, in the Spurgeon Study Bible, we read the following comments on this, on this topic. With all your heart means intensely, with all your soul means sincerely, most lovingly. And with all your strength means, with all your energy, with every faculty, with every possibility of our nature. Another way of saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength, is to seek the kingdom of God above all else. So, think and learn about it. Seek and you will find it. Seek it and you will love God more and more. Seek it and your perspectives will change for the better. Seek it daily and you will receive what you need. For your Father in heaven loves you. Loving your Lord, of loving your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind and strength, is simply a response. For we love because He first loved us. These are the steps to take and to build, grow and restore our love relationship with God. May God bless you in these efforts. Amen.